Lee, it's your girl Samantha Lee, and I am here with more of a somber video, but it's a it's a transparent one, so stay tuned, okay? This one, I'm calling it three of the hardest lessons I've learned about life the hard way. Now, y'all, this one is, it, it, stay tuned. It, I'm going to be, this is probably going to be one of my most transparent videos I've done in recent history. Uh, if you guys have listened to my podcast more than pro more than just pretty, um, I'm very transparent on there. But um, this this one is going to be one of my most transparent YouTube videos. So stay tuned. But before we get into this one, there's some things I want to put on your radar. Number one, if you have not already joined the fast growing game changer nation, y'all, we have been rocking and rolling for almost two years now. OK, and so I, I put out content almost daily. And I really, really, really don't want you guys to miss a thing. So hit that subscribe button. Also hit the notification bell because we go live every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I don't want you guys to miss that either. Also, um, if you have not already downloaded it, I have a free ebook, a gift from me to you called Finding Your Perfect Match, Avoiding the Wrong Women. I tell you what to look for and what to look out for. And so if you have not already downloaded that, you can also become a part of our email list where you're updated on all things love Samantha Lee, whether I'm traveling, whether I'm doing a live somewhere, whether I'm on a show, whether whatever that may be. I want you guys to be kept abreast of everything moving in my world. Um, number three, I think I've already said it, but we go live every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a lot of dope conversations, y'all. We be on here for two hours going at it, okay? We have so much fun and we talk about a lot of things that are happening in uh, popular culture. And I give my perspective and I also read your perspective and kind of share. Um, there's things I'm, I really do understand very well because of my background, um, but there are things I'm learning every single day. I'm open to learning. So that is what we do on Wednesday nights. Now let's get into the meat of the message. The three, three things that I have had to learn the hard way about life. First thing is that I've learned that God is sovereign. Now, Y'all, I have, there's a lot of things in my life that guys I've prayed for, you know, I pray for. Don't mind that little beat and sound, I'm making rice. Okay, so that's what that is. <laughs> um, but I've learned that in the ups and the downs, the ins and outs, there's things that I have prayed for that have not happened. There are things that I have prayed for and they have happened. There are things that have occurred in, in life. I'm gonna share one specific story. When social media first started popping off, you guys, I was I was in college, okay? And at the time, I was like building my own platform. I really didn't know myself. I was very insecure. And um, I got I got a little bit of notice, of course, in the beginning, that's the beginning of everything. Everybody was starting to go viral and images and things like that. And I I had some things that were going that went viral, images of my face, okay, nothing crazy. Um, and I got some attention for that, and I realized like I realize now, but back then I was like, man, I want this platform to grow. I'm seeing what's happening with the other young women at that time that were getting hot on social media. And it wasn't happening for me like that. I mean, it was happening, but it wasn't. And um, I remember just, you know, I was in school and things happened. I had a really challenging health scare at the time that kind of like shut me down, changed my appearance in literally like 24 to 48 hours. I looked like a completely different person. Um, if you have not looked at Steven Johnson syndrome, look it up and definitely change my appearance literally overnight. And um, yeah, I, I realized that all this other stuff wasn't like sewing into the external wasn't wasn't worth it um, because it'd be I could be look like this one day and look completely different the next day uh, for variables and things that I could not control. Um, now I'm older, right? And things are happening for me in this space that I prayed for when I was, what, 21 years old. Um, but now I have a more understanding of self and what my purpose is. Back then, I would have, I thank God now that he did not answer my prayers then. That he did not give me what I asked for in the moment. Because I would not have been able to handle it and handle it well. And even at this age, there are times where I have to check myself. There's times where I have to, you know, go before God and surrender and um, ask for forgiveness, whatever. I still have to check myself constantly, hold myself accountable. Um, and it's a daily walk, a daily process. 
But I, I know for sure that getting what I have now then would have been the worst thing God could have done. But at that time, I felt like it was unfair or this, a rejection. And it was God's protection. And there's a number of other things that I can go throughout my life where things didn't happen the way I wanted to happen. But the way that God had it happen was the best way for it to happen. There were things that I prayed for that did not happen. And I thank God today that it did not happen. Um, and so I want you guys to be encouraged. I know some of you guys may feel like where you are right now in life, you want something so bad. You've been praying for God to make something happen. And you don't realize that the version of you that needs to walk through that door to be able to receive it and steward that blessing well, you're not that version of that person yet. I was not the version I am today. I'm not, I was not at 21. Absolutely not. The version of me then could not handle what I'm dealing with today. Not handle it well, anyway. <laughs> and so I want to encourage each and every one of you guys that I know that sometimes it feels like God isn't listening and God, it's not fair. And I don't understand, like, why isn't this happening? Why is this? Why, why, why? And a lot of times it's growth. A lot of times it's process. A lot of times we we don't, we are not God. We do not understand what God is doing. We don't understand his timing. We don't understand his purpose, but we can opt in and out of the will of God based upon our choices. And a lot of times we try to take things into our own hands and not allowing God to do it the way he wants to do it in the best way. That's that's honestly the best thing for us. God is a perfect father. He only wants the best for us. He's not trying to take things away or hold things from you. He's trying to make sure it's almost like me with my daughter. I think about it now. Like there's times where I'm cooking, like I'm cooking now. My daughter will want to touch the stove. She doesn't understand that she could get burned by the stove. She just thinks I'm being mean when I'm saying, don't touch the stove, stay away from the stove. Now, if I just let her touch the stove because she wanted to touch the stove, what kind of mother would I be? If I just let her drive the car because she want to drive the car and she's five years old, what kind of mom would I be? She's not mature enough. She's not able to handle a car right now. Some of you guys, that's exactly where God is with you. You can't handle what you're praying for, or you may not, it may not be what's best for you, but trust that God is sovereign. Trust it. Number two, number two um, on this list was that the best revenge is no revenge at all. The best revenge family, a lot of times I, I've gone through things publicly. That is no secret. And I've shared on public platforms that Romans 12 is my conviction. Do not seek revenge. It said, leave room for God's rest. For it is written as mine's revenge. I will repay. If your enemies hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty. Give them something to drink. And doing this, you keep burning coals on their head. You do not overcome evil by doing evil. You overcome evil by doing good. It's been my conviction. It's been something that I've memorized. And I, I want to tell you guys that it's, it's much easier said than done. It is actually a natural instinct to defend yourself. So to not defend yourself is going against your nature, which is why it's so hard sometimes when you see things and you want to you want to correct the records, you want to say this, you want to say that that is your primitive defense is to defend yourself. Fight or flight, you know, fight, flight or freeze. And I've learned that doing it God's way is a lot of times going against our nature, going against what your body wants to do, going against what your flesh desires. You have to put those things away. You have to put those things aside. And every day it ain't easy. But what I will tell you, family, is that when you allow God to handle your situations for you, he fights in ways that you cannot. There's a quote that I saw. It was like a meme that went pop, went viral and it was popular. And somebody said, you know what? I decided I was going to take my hands off of it because I learned that God hits a whole lot harder than me. And God, and guys, if you read the Bible, you'll see that there are times the way that God handles his, his chosen one's enemies, it's to the point that the people that were once like, God, get rid of them. God, do this, do that. Being upset, fighting with themselves to not defend. They're like praying for the mercy of the people that came after them. God has ways to handle things that we don't we reap what we sow in this life. It may not happen in the moment you want it to happen or how you want it to happen, but it will happen. We all have to sit in the seat of accountability before our father 
one way or another. And so I will tell you right now, the best thing that I've learned to do, the hardest thing that I've ever learned how to do, and that I, I still every day fight with myself. I'm not going to defend myself. I'm not going to do tit for tat. I'm not going to, you know, expose people and use the internet to gain my revenge. I could do it. I have a platform to do it, but I'm not going to. God gave me this platform and he wants me to be responsible. And there's nothing responsible about being, a, it's nothing responsible about spreading gossip, gossip or, you know, putting out the receipts and going off on people. And do, that, that, has, that is not godly principles. Godly principles, godly fruit, fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, and self-control. I'm going to say it again. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, and self-control. None of that ain't got nothing to do with exposing and being messy. and all. That don't got nothing to do with God. That's you enacting your own revenge. And God is, it's a conviction on my spirit to really say, you know what, God, I trust you. I'm, I'm not going to, mm -mm. I'm going to let you handle it. You hit a whole lot harder than me and I'm just going to do what you've asked me to do because that's, that's what keeps God in the position of being able to trust me. You doing things in this life, guys, where you're like, you know what? This is what God would want me to do. I know what I know what I want to do, but this is what God wants me to do. We can say all the time we trust God, but really what shows God that we trust him is our actions in our day to day walk. And a lot of us don't realize that we can say all day long, oh, I trust God, I trust God. But how do how does that manifest in your life? How does that show? Where is the fruit? I see I meet a lot of people. I love God. I trust God. This. But your life doesn't speak to that. Your life doesn't speak to the relationship that you speak of. I don't see the fruit. Now, I can't I can't say what you're doing every day. I don't know what you got going on, but I don't see the fruit in in the Bible. It says that the that the fruit that the having a relationship with God. There's a fruit that's produced. That's what it says. It, it, it tests the fruit by the fruit. It tests the spirit by the spirit. Now, if you don't see nobody fruit. Then you got to question the root. OK, I learned that the hard way, too, but we're not going to get into that. Y'all know my story with I have been in multiple churches. I've been in questionable churches. I've also been in cults. I was in a cult when I was in college. That long story short was looking for God in all the wrong places. But God brought me back. So anyway. That's number two. Do not seek revenge. Instead, leave room for God's wrath for it is written in his mind to avenge. I will repay. Remember, guys, God takes God is a just father. He's a perfect father. But he's he's created all of us. Right. All of us have been created by him. All of us have his hand on us. And so at on some level. You have to let God deal with his his child the way he needs to. He understands how to speak his language or, or her language or whoever's language. He understands that. So let him do it. So it was like telling the teacher when we in school, okay, they did this. Okay, well, we're going to deal with little Johnny when he gets back inside. Let God be your vindicator. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Every voice raised to accuse you will be silenced. These are the benefits that are going to be enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication comes from me. I, the Lord, has spoken. What does it say in Psalms 23? says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But we're going to fast forward. It says, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. You're riding your staff, comfort and protect me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows of blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Remember these things, family. Reason why I know scripture is not because I'm just like holier than now. is because I done been through some things. Okay, scripture, your girl needed deliverance. All right. And that's why I know these things. So keep those two, keep that in mind. Learn scripture. It's, it's, it's your weapon. The sword of the spirit. It's your weapon. Okay. Number three. Last but not least, there's a backside to every blessing. 
there is a backside to every blessing. Family, I feel like a lot of times we pray for the front side. We pray for the front side. We want the platform. We want the money. We want that. We want the, the, the exposure. We want the opportunities. We want the car. We want the house. We want the this. We want the that. But we do not consider the backside. We do not consider the backside. And that, sometimes that goes back to number one, God being sovereign. He know you can't handle the backside right now. So a lot of the reasons why you haven't gotten what you've been praying for is because God's like, oh, you think you want the front side, but you don't understand the back side. You ask him for a promotion, but you can't handle the responsibilities that come with it. You ask him for something and you have not yet shown yourself to be able to handle that. So it's part of my sovereignty to not give it to you until you are at a place, a maturity that you could steward it and steward it well. I've, I've learned that, guys, that there are things that I pray for today. I prayed for prayed for when we were doing this or when I, we were starting to build this platform on YouTube. I'm praying for this. I'm praying for that. I'm praying for that. There's a backside. There's a backside, family. There's ways I have I have now had to structure my life that I did not structure before. There's a grind. There's a there's a, a consistency, a discipline that is required to create plat, uh, content on any platform. It is not easy, but God, God has had, has had to have given me the anointing to do this, to be able to do it every single week, to do it the way that I do it every single week. There is a backside to every blessing. And that's not to run away from praying for the things that you envision for yourself. But it is an awareness that as I pray for a new level, I've got to prepare myself for a new devil. As I get the promotion, I have to understand that there's responsibilities. As I pray for a husband, I got to I got to understand what comes with that, the responsibilities that come with that. What is asked of me? I can't. A lot of people, we ask him for a lot of different things. And, you know, I talk about relationships a lot. So I'll use that as my primary example in this one. A lot of people saying, I want to be married. I want to be married. I want to, I want a husband. I want a wife. I want this. I want that. Okay. You want that, but there's a, there's a responsibility to that. Yes. Okay. You have the, what a lot of people want the wedding. They don't want the marriage. That's real talk. You want the, the pictures and the, and the wedding dresses and the this and the that and the wearing the ring. You want all of that. I'm talking about men and women. There are men that just want wives. They don't want to be husbands. I said a word right there. There are women that want husbands, but they don't want to be wives. There is a responsibility that I don't feel like our society truly understands, truly has like really conceptualized. There is a, it is work. It's not just cool to have a ring on because you in your thirties and it's time. No, it's, it's a responsibility that comes with it. And if you do not steward the front side well, or you don't steward the back side well, you will lose the front side. If you don't steward the back side, if you don't, understand, you don't steward the responsibility, you will lose the blessing. That's real talk. That's real, that's real life. And I've seen it. I've experienced it. And I've learned it the hard way. All right. And I've, I've lost, you know, there's jobs and situations. Now, I've never been fired from a job, but there's been things that I've worked on family that I did not understand that what I, you know, in that moment, what I was taking on. And there's levels of success I could not reach in that particular area because I did not understand the the weight of the responsibility. It sounded good. It was cool, but I wasn't ready. Okay. And that's all these kind of play into each other, but it all comes back to number one for me. It's like, God is sovereign. He really does know what's best for us. And we've got to trust his process. Period. All right, family. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you've watched it all the way through. Like, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let's get into it. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you guys. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button, y'all. Let's not just 
be every once in a while. Let's become family, okay? Friends that are family, <laughs> okay? Join my family today. 